Connecticut has serious money problems, and he calls himself the cash cop. Jeff Wright says he is coming to the budget's rescue. Also, Ken Krayeski is running for Congress. You know his name. Now hear his game plan for winning your vote. And if you're not following us on Twitter yet, you are missing out. We're going to talk about how tweeting is changing journalism. You're watching The Real Story. I'm Lori Perez. This is a very busy election season. Lots of races to talk about. One of them that is probably not getting a whole lot of attention is the uh, treasurer race. Joining us today is Mayor Jeff Wright. He is the Republican candidate for state treasurer. Thanks, Mayor, for being here. Absolutely, Lori. And also our old friend Pat Scully. He was here last week. He's back again to help us out for the show. Thanks a lot, Pat. Thanks, Lori. So, Mayor, let's talk about uh, why should people be paying attention to the state treasurer race? <laughs> well... You know, normally, a treasurer's race can be somewhat of a yawn, I think, yes. most people, but uh, with the serious financial issues facing the state of Connecticut, I think everything that in this year's election is about it, fiscal issues and how do we get it so things are good again so we get jobs coming back and lead Connecticut's comeback. That's why people should pay attention, because I want to be Connecticut's cash cop to protect your money, because the career politicians are. And what is it, uh, what's going to be your first order of business where, if you were elected? Well, I mean, the, the first order of business is to become an advocate for the people and, and, and good, solid economic policy so we can see that job creation. Mm -hmm. uh, bottom line is get in there. Uh, the debt. Let's talk about the debt, for example. Um, you know, once again, unfortunately, in, uh, in July, we were reaffirmed by Money Magazine CNN that we have the highest per capita debt, more than five times the national average. Mm -hmm. As the next treasurer of the state of Connecticut, um, I will refuse to issue bonds that relate to uh, paying operating expenses. Over the last two years, the legislature and the treasurer have issued over $2 billion just to pay for the light bills. Mm -hmm. So, but Do you think, uh, Mr. Mayor, the cash cop is, has caught on. It's very clever. Yeah. Uh, but one of the things that did get noticed recently in the news is that you qualified for public financing of your campaign. Um, that is something that Republicans, uh, at least some of them, including the top of the ticket, yeah. gubernatorial candidate Tom Foley, have said it's not a good thing. And as cash cop, do you think it is a good use of the taxpayer's cash to question. pay for your campaign? I, I think that's a great question, uh, Pat. I mean, the bottom line is I, I'm very grateful to over the 1,100 uh, donors that helped us qualify this campaign, and I think it shows uh, to the degree of excitement and interest in, in protecting people's money because the folks haven't been doing it. Um, specifically to that question of public financing, uh, I personally have a, have a bit of a conflict with the issue. I don't really think politicians should be using the, the taxpayers' money, but the bottom line is the legislature and the governor put this plan in place. It's the rules of the road. Um, so we're playing by the rules. And um, you know, I, I think if, if you elect Tom Foley and other Republicans to the legislature, um, I, I think you might see there not be a publicly financed campaigns in the future. Well, I think Tom Foley is in, in a bit of a jam because he has demonized this program, mm -hmm. yet he set out solicitations asking people to help you to qualify. Yeah. So that's a conflict in and of itself. But if you were elected, would you support repeal of the campaign finance reform law that includes public financing? Yes, I would. You would? You would, you would support repealing it? I, I would, yes. I mean, the, the thing people have to understand is if I went out and raised more money uh, in the old-fashioned way of just asking donors for money and there's no taxpayer money, um, if I do that and I do it successfully, that would just reward my opponent even further. And, and, you know, based on the rules and the circumstances that are in front of us, you know, I'm playing by the, the program's rules. And I think that it speaks volumes in the fact that we were able to qualify before the 12-year incumbent did um, and having over 1,100 supporters. I mean, I got, you know, donations from all corners of the state of Connecticut. And uh, I'm proud of that fact. I'm very proud of the fact that we were able to do it. And uh, we're going to bring a good message to the people of Connecticut. You know, you were talking about bonds early on in the Connecticut's bond indebtedness. And, uh, you know, recently the state used uh, about $3 million, right? Didn't they? With Oak Leaf Management, uh, they wanted to, they were threatening to leave. They said they were going to go to Georgia. So the state used uh, $3 million to keep them and move them from East Hartford to East Windsor. Now, would, would you approve of that kind of use? Well, I We've created a real pickle in the state because yeah. we're the highest per capita in debt. You know, we have one of the highest tax rates in the nation. You know, us in Michigan and the only two states over the last 20 years that haven't created a job. 
I don't think it's smart long term to, to pay uh, businesses to stay in the state of Connecticut or to move them from one place to another place in the state of Connecticut. I think the point is, though, we've got to make it so it's a business-friendly environment so entrepreneurs, businesses of all sizes, small, medium, and large, want to come and invest in the state of Connecticut. And if you keep, if you keep regulation down, you keep taxes down, and, and you manage the debt, you manage things so... You know, businessmen don't, or, and business women don't step back and say, wait a minute, we're just waiting for the next shoe to drop, mm -hmm. which just means more taxes. Mm -hmm. We have a spending problem in this state. We've got to get that under control. And I'll be an advocate to cut spending and, and to fight any tax increase for the state. And to that point, um, obviously as a, a challenger uh, to an incumbent that's been there quite a while and mm -hmm. is a proven vote getter, um, you have an, on your website a critique of Denise Napier. And you said that on, on Napier's watch, $2 billion was borrowed to balance the budget, which is, which is true, and one-shot revenues as well yes. that people are critical of. But it's the governor that proposes the budget and the legislature that, vote puts it, that changes it and votes on it, and then the governor can veto it or not. What, what role did Denise Hapier, Napier have in, in any of that? And, and also, would you suggest that your role would be different than, right. than hers? I, I would take a more activist role in this position. I think we need somebody that's the state of treasurer as a chief financial officer to get out there. There's a fiduciary obligation to the treasurer to be the, the advocate for taxpayers and good, solid financial planning. As a certified financial planner, I'm going to get out there and advocate solid financial planning so we can set the table for growth in the future. To answer that question more specifically, this isn't a Republican or Democrat issue per say. The, you know, we used to just be a tax and spend state. We've become a, a, a TBS state. And I'm not talking about a channel. TBS being tax, borrow, and spend. Uh, we need somebody like me to go up to, up to Hartford and advocate for fiscal responsibility and fiscal discipline, which I will do. I don't think it was a good decision to borrow over $2 billion. We're basically borrowing from our kids' future to pay for the, because nobody wants to make a hard decision today. I mean, this past budget, the past two budgets, you see a lot of uh, Democratic legislators out there advocating in, in their mail pieces they've sent out to the people saying that, hey, we did a great job. We, borrow, we balanced the budget without raising taxes. Well, yeah. I'm calling the last two budgets bino budgets. <laughs> Let me explain that for a second. Bino, balanced in name only. Mm -hmm. And the bottom line is if you go and borrow money, you're not balancing anything. You're not getting to the issue. But as the treasurer, you, in, in other words, you'd be using sort of a bully pulpit. I mean, there's not a statutory role. Well, I would be using a bully pulpit, number one. And number two, it's never been challenged, but like the state of New York and Connecticut, the treasurer has a, is a sole fiduciary of the state from, from that perspective. And it's never been challenged, but I will give the people a commitment in the state of Connecticut. If they want to borrow money to pay for the operating expenses, I will refuse to issue those bonds. And if they want to take me to court and force me to do that, go ahead. I think we can win that challenge. But the bottom line is I think we need to f force the career politicians to either cut spending or raise taxes. Is obviously, I advocate cutting spending. We only have about 30 seconds. You're an independent financial planner. I mean, you have a lot certified. of clients. Certified. Yeah. Yes. I mean, would people, uh, would your clients come forward and say, yeah, it's made me a lot of money? I, I think the clients <laughs> will realize that I give them good, solid financial advice for the long term. You know, it's been a tough environment, yeah. but I, I focus on getting the highest possible return for the lowest possible risk. So. Uh, I think you, people would be happy with me. And, you know, and I also served as a Marine, and a United States Marine, and people, I think, respect that discipline that I bring to it. Absolutely. Well, we wish you good luck. We're glad that you are here. You, yeah, you want yeah, to show us a sticker? Before you go, I want to well, deputize you both well, yeah, as uh, well, cash cops. I'm not sure cops. I can put it on, but <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll be happy so to this is the, uh, the, the <laughs> cash, cash cop badges we have for the campaign. You're so. the first guest who's given us any, like, uh, you yeah, know, stuff. So, so, so you're good in our in so our eyes. Thanks a lot. We're going to need a lot of deputies out there in the taxpayers. You're not going to be pulling people over or anything. No, no, absolutely not. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks very much. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Appreciate it. Well, up next, you might know Ken Krajewski for some of his controversial or some might call passionate past. Up next, we're going to talk about what he hopes his future will look like.